this is the time when we open up the doors to you and we let them in. When you're up, when you're down, when you're bound, Friend and brother, Pastor James Funches in the Blessed Hope Tabernacle Outreach Ministry. The songs are titled Let Him In. The, the hymn we're speaking of again is the Holy Spirit, Jesus the Christ, God the Father, the Trinity, the Godhead. Amen. And indeed, we must let the Holy Spirit. And the Bible tells us in Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved with the heart. Man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. There's no other name given unto heaven unto mankind that we must be saved jesus said i'm the way the truth and i'm the life amen we're um back for part two of healing our lands church of the midnight hour broadcast i'll be with you through till 6 a.m we're so grateful to be live here in the studio this morning again church of the midnight hour for healing our land happens every saturday 5 a.m to 7 a.m sundays and wednesdays 4 a.m to 6 a.m. Be the generous support of Caleb International Ministry and the Ezra Institutes of Apologetics. Please visit the webpage www.calebim.org to learn more of Caleb International Ministry and the Ezra Institutes of Apologetics. So grateful to be a proud graduate of both of those institutes. And I uh, celebrate and acknowledge all of our alumni and the founder and one of my spiritual fathers in the gospel, Pastor Louis Legata, again, a supporter of the Ministry of Healing Our Land since its inception of February of 1998. Healing Our Land is also has the privilege of being on Boston Praise Radio ON TV Network, our main platform, www.bostonpraiseradio.tv. Tuesday through Friday, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is our schedule, as well as Sunday evening, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And so grateful for the privilege and opportunity to serve here under the leadership of our um, station manager, uh, Deacon Renee Wise, as well as our senior pastors, Pastor Bruce and Pastor Karen Wall of the Global Ministries Christian Church, the parent body of the Boston Praise Radio Owen TV Network and home of the Healing Our Land Ministry and uh, on behalf of our senior pastors, Bruce and Karen Wall, you have a standing invitation to worship with us virtually via www.bostonpraiseradio.tv. Every Sunday morning, 10 a.m. is our corporate worship experience, starting actually with setting the atmosphere at 930. But quite candidly, you can tune in 24 hours a day via www.bostonpraiseradio.tv for the voice of the church alive and well here in the city of Boston, New England, echoing throughout the entire globe. We also want to invite you to worship with us for our corporate worship experience on Friday night, 7 p.m. is prayer. And we come together and praise God and we come together and pray. And uh, we encourage you to tune in. But it's always something good. On the Boston Praise Radio Owen TV Network. I was again walking to the station on this morning as I typically do. And I love the opportunity quite candidly when the weather permits to be able to, to walk in. But even if I'm in a cab or I have the opportunity to do that, I'm still praying uh, for the territory that we are um, assigned to right here in this area. And I uh, give God praise as I um, was walking to the station on this morning listening to Boston Praise Radio Owen TV Network. I heard our sister Renisha. Uh, Simpson and Leslie Clayton, who are the co-host of the Recovery Connection, a great broadcast here on the Boston Praise Radio ONT Network. So it's always, again, something good. So I encourage you, those who are tuning in via my personal Facebook page and those who are tuning in via uh, our respective platforms, inclusive of our FM platform, WBPGLP 102.9 FM. We're so grateful that you're tuned in and we encourage you to please, please, please visit our main webpage, www.bostonpraiseradio.tv, where you can learn more of the vision of the Boston Praise Radio Open TV Network and uh, help that full vision to come to fruition. But without further ado, I want to continue as promised with music by our friend, our sister, co-laborer in Christ and the person of Elder Jeannie Jackson Smith from her project, her freshman project, and we're so proud of her. We encourage you to support her and to pick up the project. I, you'll be blessed and certainly be a blessing. And uh, the project title cut is Greater. I'm actually going to do a pull up. I closed out the last broadcast, the first portion of uh, our two hour broadcast 
with the song grade of the title cut but i'm going to do a pull up and play the uh uh the three tracks from the project at this time again greater is coming don't be weary and well doing for in due season we shall reap a harvest of blessings if we faint and the bible says we that wait upon the lord will renew our strength will mount up with wings as eagles will run and not be weary will walk and not faint wait i say on the lord <laughs> Jackson Smith, the song's on title, Prayer That Your Faith Fails Not. I believe I have that right. This is Jackson Smith. I asked the Lord one day, how did I make it through? 
through sunshine and rain, heartaches and pain. He said, I prayed for you that your faith will never fail. Then Jesus said, all the times you walk away from me, my grace and my mercy follow thee. I knew you would lie and deny me, but yet and still I have a plan for thee. That's why I prayed for you, that your faith would never fail. That's why I prayed for you, that your faith would never Verses 31 through 34, Jesus is having a dialogue with all of his disciples at the Last Supper, shortly before his crucifixion. But he turns his attention to one of them by the name of Simon Peter, and he says this, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. And when you have returned, strengthen your brethren. Needless to say, all that Jesus predicted would happen, did happen. What am I saying here today? Like Peter, you and I have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. But guess what, I bring you good news. That no matter where you find yourself, whether you've lied, whether you've denied knowing the Lord, God has already prayed for you. Praise God. So repent and return and get back in place with God. Know this, that your testimony was served as a message to help many to be saved. that with you in just a moment playing more music from elder jenny jackson smith project greater songs entitled moving ahead
faith fails not. Amen. Again, I thank God for the Holy Spirit as he just continues to confirm himself. I thank God as the Holy Spirit woke me up actually through a dream on this morning as I went to bed. Late maybe 12, I had to be up about like 3 to leave to be able to be here by 4 in the morning. And I thank God the Holy Spirit woke me up in a dream that woke me up. I thought it was real, but it was a dream, but it was one that actually woke me up. And I was actually... Dreaming about the station and, and interestingly enough, and being on the air, so it's interesting. Um, in any event, so I spend some time as I, you know, try to make it my practice to, um, when I wake up, to pray and to read the word, even if it's just briefly, as that sets the tone for my day. And so, as I prayed and thank God for waking me up and for yet keeping me through the night and um, and went to the word. I have a lot of Bibles all over my house in little pieces, and some of them are I've used so well. Again, these are not things that we put up on the shelves to uh, get dust, but they're something that we should actually mark and, and we should really study. And so one of my Bibles is in pieces, and this is one of the pieces that uh, was led, that really the Lord led me to on this morning. So I want to read it to you, and it's in Matthew, uh, the 16th chapter, and it starts with verse 17 but actually there's a little piece of uh the 16th verse says son of the living god then verse 17 says and jesus answered and said unto them blessed art thou simon bar jonah for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee but my father which is in heaven and i say unto thee that thou art peter and upon this rock i will build my church in the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they shouldn't tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him saying, be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he returned and said to Peter, get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me. For thou savoreth not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, he let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Wow, and that blessed my life as we see all this going on. God bless you, Evangelist Hope, but barely my dear friend and sister for Taste of Eating Restaurant, Love You to Life. Spiritual mom to one of my spiritual sons, Patrick. I thank God for her life and encourage you to support her business on, uh, um, oh, help me. Um, oh, where is the address? It's 38 Norfolk Street, I believe. I think it's 38 Norfolk Street, um, Taste of Eating Restaurant. 
Amen. But I thank God again for the family of God and for the word of God. He just confirms and confirms and confirms. And so with all that's going on with this worldwide pandemic, thanks be to God to know that this is Bible prophecy coming to fulfillment. Amen. And the Bible says that we don't know when he's coming, but he's coming as a thief in the night. But it's so important that we see the sign of the times and that we're doing kingdom work, that we're prepared. One, he would that none would perish and that all would come unto repentance. The Bible says when you hear of wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes in different places and pestilence, look up because your redemption is drawing near. But it's not the end, but the beginning of the end. As a woman's contractions begin to intensify as she's bringing forth her child. Likewise, all the creation is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God, the body of Christ, many members, but one body. Psalm 91 says, he that dwells, lives, stays in the secret place of the most high. That's who will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Again, as I was walking to the station on this morning, I was listening to the Recovery Connection broadcast and they raised up Psalms 91. And I thank God as we're even interceding in this where this coronavirus and all that's going on, something that we cannot see. I had the privilege of being a part of a prayer call, and my charge was to pray against pestilence. And that word came to me in confirmation on this morning that again, Psalm 91, he will keep us from the noisome pestilence. We'll see destruction that will fall around us, but it won't come nigh our dwelling. The safest place in the whole world is in the center of of the perfect will of God. But God, we're to have an impact on a people group or a sphere of influence through our respective yes to God. And so I thank you for that word, my sister, Elder Jeannie Jackson Smith, that greater is coming. We can't be weary and well-doing and many evangelists barely. And so I just give God praise that our ladder is going to be greater than our past. Our best is yet to come. This is the church's finest hour. And so I give God praise for fresh download, for revelation, and God is confirming. Doors are opening. Favor is happening. Blessings are chasing us down. So we can't be distracted by what we see, by what we feel. We've got to stay focused on God's word and know that he will not forsake the work of his own hand. Amen. And so I give God praise again for just the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, and God is not a man that he can lie, the son, but, but, he, but the Word will accomplish what he intended for it to do. Amen. I see my family in um, um, communicating. God bless you. I love you all alive. Turn to you from grace and you're saying, yes, Elder Jenny Jackson is saying, glory to God. Turn to you from grace and you're saying, powerful word into God. Be the great. I thank God for my tribe, my spiritual family that God is um is surrounding us that he ordains that he connects and these are people from all across the globe i've never met my brother turns from grace senior in the flesh in the natural i've never laid eyes in the flesh with my sister elder Jeannie jackson smith um my sister evangelist hope bailey is right here in boston but again we're connected for kingdom purposes it's not happenstance not coincidence god has a plan and we have the iron sharpens iron many members but one body that no flesh will glory in the presence of God. I'm going to go on to some more music. This song, again, is um, my niece is leading the song. is with her praise and worship team called Rally Worship. And I love this song. It's called The Father's Love. <laughs> Father's love is indescribable. The Father's love is unexplainable. The Father's love is unbelievable. The Father's love, it is. Father 
not death, nor life, and there's no death, and there's no height that will ever separate us from the love of Jesus. No powers and no rulers, there's nothing present and there's nothing future that will ever separate us from the love of Jesus. So give up that heart of stone and let the Father love you. The Father loves you. Oh, give up that heart of stone and let the Father love you. The Father loves you. This is the moment, this is the day Give up that heart of stone Let his love wash you away This is the moment, this is the day Give up that heart of stone Let his love wash you away separate us from the love of God full of mercy full of grace for the undeserving ones nothing can separate us from the love of God full of mercy full of grace for the undeserving ones Some of the uh, comments in the Facebook live feed again. Our, band, our sister evangelist Hope Billy says, "Nothing can separate us from the love of God." Elder Jenny Jackson said, "That's the book." Um, and Terrence from Ray Singer says, "I pray for y'all." Amen. Thank you for uh, your prayers. I want to share something with you. As I was um, yesterday morning in my devotional time, and um, I was just thanking God for the Holy Spirit as it just leads and it God says as only it can do. And um my brother Ford, Mitchum Anthony Ford, aka Tiny, he sent me a prayer as I was in devotion time, listening to some worship music, reading the word, and just talking to God as he was just, you know, the sweet intimacy of the Holy Spirit, and he sent me this message that it was a prayer, actually, that blessed my life, and it was right on time. And I want to actually share just some of the conversation as it just confirms the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit and the fellowship with each other. He says, my dear friend and brother, keep up the fantastic work that you're doing over the radio airways. If no one is telling you thank you for your labor of love, I'm telling you thank you because I have been in I have been in only out of my room only four times this year to go to the hospital. I am right side paralyzed from my head to my right foot and wheelchair bound. But I'm not dead. Capital D-E-A-D <laughs> exclamation point. He says individual like me appreciate what you do. The elderly, the divorced, the homeless, the lonely, the disabled, the woman with children and no support. We need you. Love you more always. Elder M. Anthony Ford, a.k.a. Tiny. And that moved me to tears as I began to intercede even more fervently for him and for so many people who got put on my heart as we're intercessors. And um, I was just moved, overwhelmed and full of the presence of the Holy Spirit after I um, read his um, his message and let me back up here um, 
Okay, so that's actually the second portion. I, I'm sorry, I'm moving quickly. So here's what the prayer that he sent me first. Um, and it says, bear with me here. Okay, he says, good morning. Trust all is well with you today. This was my morning prayer and I wanted to share it with you. It's by Walter Rogers. Renouncing fear. Father, we thank you and praise you. You are our father. We have a hope and reliance on you as your children. We understand you won't put anything more on us than we are able to handle. Because of that, we put our trust in you. It is in you that we live, we move, and have our being. We live in you and you live within us we come now against the spirit of fear is a debilitating agent it comes to keep us from fully embracing what you have for us fear comes to us as fear comes to keep us looking at the surroundings and not focus on your voice if peter had stayed focused he would have successfully walked on the water the circumstances weren't a hindrance to him walking on the water it was when peter took his eyes off of the place and placed them on the circumstance that he began to sink you have already sent your never failing word had peter rested in your word nothing could have harmed him you are now sending your word to many of us today help us learn from this lesson from Peter the circumstances do did not change but you still sent your word help us to know to hear your word to move out on it you are not preparing ideal circumstances you are preparing us in ideal circumstances we do not have to we do not have to fully rely on you it is when circumstances are not ideal that we have to give you total attention or we sink you are calling us to move out where circumstances tell us to stay you have not given us a spirit of fear you are calling us to stretch out on you and to fully depend on you to walk on the waters with you we now free our minds of every negative word that has taken root in our minds we free our ears of every negative word that surrounds our atmosphere we renounce every negative word that we have thought and every negative word that came out of our mouths we will not be held captive to them any longer. We renounce every thought of failure, every thought of rejection, every thought of unworthiness. We reject every doubt and we, that we reject every doubt and the I cannot attitude. We replace those thoughts and attitudes with I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. We replace every negative thought with I am sure that he who has begun a good work in me will bring that work to completion we replace negative thoughts with we are his workmanship created in christ jesus unto good works which god has preordained that we should walk in them we replace every negative word with we are well able lord you knew the correct time to call us if you called us to walk off to walk, I'm sorry, if you called us to walk on the waters in the midst of the storm, you are well able to sustain us on the water through the storm. Every thought, every word contrary to that, we renounce now in the name of Jesus. We are who you said we are. We have what you said we have. We can do what you said we can do. We shall fulfill every word spoken out of your mouth concerning us. They will not return void. We were we are well able it will not be by our might nor will it be by our power but will be by your spirit the that spirit the works in and through us give us dove's eyes so we won't be distracted we will walk the path you place before us even if it means walking on the water in the name of jesus amen and that as he gave me that prayer, 
I said, amen, glory to God. Thank you so much, mighty man of God, blessings. And that's when he then communicated the, the sentiment I just conveyed uh, my dear friend and began to tell me his circumstance and the important and encouraging me to continue to be on the air. I had no idea his physical condition of being paralyzed and disabled and, um, um, and confined to his home and the importance of how this broadcast was blessing his life. We don't understand what we're doing and the enemy will have us to feel that it's not impactful and to be distracted and to sometimes, you know, and, and just and, and, and speak negative things. So I thank God for that prayer. I thank God for the fellowship. And I said to him, wow, I'm speechless, overwhelmed with the sweet presence of the Holy Spirit. I was listening to praise and worship, praying, reading his word, and just having morning devotional time with when I received this on time word from the Holy Spirit via you that ushered me further into worship, intercession, and priceless fellowship that filled me to overflow. Thank you so much. I love you to life, mighty man of God, my beloved brother, and Jesus the Christ and friend. I had no idea of your situation. You inspire me. We need you too. And he said, I'm available to you. I send that out for the sick and the shut-in, and I give myself away. Keep up the wonderful work that you do. Amen. Priceless, priceless, priceless fellowship. I tell you, nothing like, and God gives us right what we need when we need it just to encourage us. I spoke to a brother on yesterday, and Healing Our Land is going to be the recipient of a, a small grant uh, to be able to do some work to encourage people to participate in the census. And again, it was something that came to me as we just were continuing to do what God called for us to do. Uh, we're um, believing God for uh to for a miracle right here in the state of massachusetts and i'm believing i'm asking people to agree with me we're we're expecting a miracle in november's election we're believing that god's going to give us the favor of um being to put into place throughout the entire commonwealth of massachusetts voting booths in our houses of correction so our returning citizens can exercise their civic uh duty and i want to speak it out into the airways for the very first time on this morning because I have my family and tribe with me that I know will be in agreement with me and uh, and on that one accord to for God's glory take the weak things to confound the strong and the foolish things to confound the wise and the lowly things of this world to bring shame to the proud that no flesh will glory in the presence of God I received a letter from my brother Pastor Sean Harrison who is incarcerated and again I'm making an appeal um, for if you can see this, this is the letter he wrote me that I recently just received on today. But more importantly, I want to bring attention to his address, which is Sean Harrison, 111395 cell 50 P.O. Box 100, South Walpole, Mass, 02071. I can give it to you if you need it to call me at 617 I want to thank Karen Penn who said yes I'll write and she did write he did receive the letter he was so blessed he is as they're incarcerated and they're practicing social distancing means they're confined to their cell they're not even able to come out other than to make a phone call um, with mask and to take a shower um, and that's like a, a, a 20 minute window or something to that effect so can you imagine being confined to a, a six foot cell um, and not being able to engage uh, even your come out for fresh air to be able to engage other returning citizens. Um, and it's really challenging. This is a, a, a pastor who um, is incarcerated and asking the body of Christ, the believers, to be able to just encourage him, just to write to him, just to pray with him. Whether you believe he's guilty or not is really irrelevant. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 13, 3, as he puts on the back of every letter that um, the Bible tells us that we should be act as though we are in prison with those who are actually incarcerated. And I want to actually read the scripture to you briefly because I don't want to paraphrase it. Continue to remember those in prison as if you were together with them in prison. And those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. This is what we're called to do. And particularly to those who name the name of Jesus the Christ. And so I really make an appeal once again for uh, it just a couple of lines would mean so much uh, when you are incarcerated and you have no one 
um, and your brothers and sisters who you co-labored with and you're incarcerated seeming as though they aren't concerned about you um, and the enemy will try to just beat up on you. So uh, again, this is what we're called to do, to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to be able to bring in the stranger. This is how we show the love of Jesus Christ and just don't talk it. This is how Jesus separates the sheep from the goats. Uh, Jesus said, when I was in prison, you didn't visit me. When I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I needed clothing, you didn't provide it for me. And they said, Master, when did we see you in that state? And Jesus' response is, when you did not do it unto the least of them, you didn't do it unto me. And conversely, when you do it unto the least of them, as society deems the least of them, you do it unto me. If we want to be the greatest in the kingdom of God, we must be willing to serve the least of them. And so I give God praise for the privilege and the opportunity through Healing Our Land Ministry to be able to practically co-labor with folks to be able to minister to whom society deems to be the least of them. Amen. I want to go to some more music again. Um, my time is just about winding down, um, but I really thank God for each and every one of you who are um, tuned in, my brother, to turn to Racing with communicating hallelujah in Jesus' name, I receive, amen. Yes, Lord, amen, amen. So actually the song that I want to go to is, bear with me here. Um, here we go, okay. Um, Bless the Lord. Rest my soul. Let's do that. Um, again, this is a rally worship in the song. It's sung led by my niece, Austin Harakova. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. That's where our rest is, is in your presence. to the faint and to the weak he gives his strength and the weary need not fear because Jesus is here Jesus is here when we fall he gives us grace and he gives mercy when we stray the lost they need not fear because Jesus is here Jesus is here your presence Jesus, yeah. 
presence of Jesus He is here with us And He's given us freedom Find rest my soul In the presence of Jesus He is here with us And He's given us freedom Find rest in my soul In the presence of Jesus He is here with us And He's given us freedom Find rest in my soul In the presence of Jesus He is here with us And He's given us freedom Blind eyes are open And the lame they walk again There's hope for the hopeless Because our Jesus lives And our hope is rising Overflowing from deep within Miracles can happen Because our Jesus lives called Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Here, sung by Heaven's Motambiria and Amplified Praise. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living. Your presence, Lord I've tasted and seen The sweetest of loves When my heart becomes free And my shame is on Your presence, Lord. So, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for to be yours.
let your presence feel this room right now. Let your presence feel my life right now. Oh, 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 oh. let your glory feel this room right now. Experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. 